Beth Wessel Crochel. Okay, the act of relating to licensing an abortion facility, including fees and providing penalties. Um, let's start over here. So who wants to start, introduce yourself, and then we're going to go right for comments, or we're going to just do comments as we go. Daniel Zeno, ACLU of Iowa, we were interested in polls. Uh, we know that this is part of a bigger effort to limit and eventually ban abortion. Um, medical providers who provide abortion care already have licensing requirements, already as subject to a whole range of regulation, and this is just an attempt to limit abortion. Um, and so for that purpose, we oppose the bill. Keith Saunders, Board of Regents, University of Iowa, UIC, just monitoring. Daniel Sunning with the Family Leader, registered in support of the bill. I just note that uh, 22 states require abortions to be performed uh, in licensed facilities, and that includes New Jersey, Connecticut, and Illinois. Uh, Tom Chapman from the Iowa Catholic Conference, we have registered in support of the bill. We think this is a common sense bill that puts patient safety first. I would note in the uh, Planned Parenthood versus Reynolds court decision, the Iowa Supreme Court said, the state has a compelling interest in protecting the woman's own health and safety and ensuring that abortions, like other medical procedures, are performed under safe circumstances for the patient. This bill is clearly constitutional under both the United States and other constitutions. The state has considerable discretion in determining standards for the licensing of medical facilities. And so I think from our perspective, I appreciate the fact you're trying to stand in the shoes of women and ensuring patient safety. Um, whether people oppose or support legal abortion, the least we can do is make sure that women receive proper care. Uh, my name is Maggie Dewitty and I'm the Executive Director of I Wins for Life and I'm in support and registered in support of this bill and thank you for bringing it forward. <coughs> what I can understand and what I haven't understand for years <coughs> is how we could have allowed um, centers that perform dangerous procedures that obviously result in the death of a child um, to be unlicensed and unregulated as long as we have. This bill requires minimum standards for safety and standards of care, including that the staff of these facilities are qualified professionals and the facilities are sanitary and provide emergency equipment and procedures. This bill seems pretty straightforward and long overdue. While I don't believe that abortion is health care, or it's normal, or is ever the best decision for a woman in crisis, I do want her to be safe. I want her to know that if she makes this decision, she is at least going into a facility that must be licensed and meet basic safety standards. And frankly, if anyone truly cares about the well-being of Iowa women, they will support this legislation. Women deserve the best and highest standards and requiring basic licensing oversight is a step in the right direction. And I urge this bill to move forward. I'm the Department of Inspections and Appeals. We're registered and decided on the bill. Just wanted to point out a couple of things that our department saw. We would be the ones that would uh, be required to do the inspections and the licensing. The first thing is we don't currently inspect uh, doctor's offices at all. Um, so it would probably take us a little while to create what those standards that we would be inspecting for would be. Because um, also most of our surveyors currently are federally funded. This would be completely 100% state only, which given the, the licensing fee may cover that, but just wanted to make sure you were aware it would be state only funding for these. Um, and then the last piece I want to point out is it says um, on page one, section three, when it exempts those that need one, it says physicians who primarily perform abortions. And so we would hope that that, that burden of proof would be on the physician and not on our department to determine whether or not they need to be licensed. Um, that's just one thing we wanted to point out. We're not sure how we would determine that. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Kim Rowley, and I'm a director of Life Ministries for Lutheran Family Service. And um, as uh, in that position, I'm responsible um, for the licensing of our adoption agents. And so I've come to speak to you today in support of this bill. Um, I've been through these procedures for licensing, and I find them to be incredibly helpful in terms of making sure uh, that each one of our areas is having the correct personnel, that our records are record keeping our um, and uh, you know we're important in this is we do this for the safety of the children who are placing for adoption. I have, we have had um, you know, the, the same goals for how we treat women in our pregnancy counseling, and I'd like to see women supported in the same way that their safety matters. Um, and it matters in these abortion facilities where the children are, uh, you know, their lives are ending, but those women um, are important and they need to be, their safety standards are, are crucial. Um, and I'm not certain why we haven't done this in the past. And so I would, I would support the bill and hope that you move the measure forward. I'm Connie Ryan, um, Executive Director and Lobbyist for NFL Alliance of Iowa Action Fund. We're registered opposed to the legislation for many of the same reasons that Daniel Aquino pointed out. We already have standards, we already have um, the state area takes responsibility for making sure that uh, providers are licensed. Um, if we are interested in safe legal abortions, as has been stated by a couple of the colleagues at CDB, then we need to make sure that abortions remain legal. Safe legal abortions happen, safe abortions happen because they are legal. When you take away a woman's right to have an abortion, when you take away constitutionally or in other ways that right, they become unsafe. They become not part of the, the medical system. And so um, we um, strongly oppose this legislation, but also any kind of um, effort to take away safe legal abortions. Hi everyone, Jamie Birch Elliott, uh, Planned Parenthood North Central States, Planned Parenthood Advocates of Iowa. Uh, we oppose the bill. Um, it's clear that these, um, you know, licenses are not already in place because we do not apply these types of licenses to other healthcare facilities. Um, so why single out abortion providers in this instance? Um, you know, Planned Parenthood, the health and safety of our patients is our number one priority. Uh, our doctors, our nurses are highly trained um, and they provide the highest standards of patient care. They follow all of the rigorous safety and ethical guidelines required by their medical licenses. Uh, and, you know, really regulation of all medical centers that genuinely protect the health and safety of patients is critical um, and it's clear that this is a politically motivated restriction and it's medically unnecessary and inappropriate and instead of putting uh, the safety of women first it actually puts them more at risk uh, by putting these onerous restrictions in place. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, my name is Carol, the family leader. Uh, we're in support of the legislation and thank you for bringing it forward. Um, I'll bet if you went out on the street, most people would be surprised, if not uh, shocked, that these facilities are not already licensed and inspected. Um, this is probably a long time coming. Uh, it seems to make good sense. Uh, we license, inspect, and regulate a lot of things. Uh, you can't even bake a pie for rag rye without a kitchen facility uh, that has been inspected and licensed by the department, uh, the appropriate department. So uh, we encourage uh, this legislation to move forward. Thank you. Chuck Hurley with the family leader. Thanks for bringing the bill. Um, one of the previous speakers talked about the safe and legal. Well, abortion is legal in Iowa, but it isn't necessarily safe. And that's the same as in Pennsylvania. You've probably heard the name Kermit Gosnell. Uh, had an abortion clinic for decades and was not regulated, was not inspected. And he, uh, there's been movies made about him. It was unsanitary, women died. Uh, and so I think it's only appropriate on somebody of this severe of an age that the state does make sure that as long as it's legal, uh, it is truly safe. Thank you. Can I add another point that Planned Parenthood is already 
um, inspected and follows a variety of federal reg regulations, including the clinical laboratory improvement amendments, uh, HIPAA, so the health insurance portability and out accountability, and the um, and OSHA. So you know there are already inspections at the federal level, um, and so it's not that these facilities are not uh, you know it, it's the providers that are licensed, and that's just how healthcare works. Um, so. Just, just to be clear. Are there any other comments? Okay, I do want to address a couple of things. First off, you said that we are good in the other surgical, like any other type of surgeries. I encourage you to look at House Bible 2066, which is licensure for other ambulatory surgical centers and other things. So this is not just a coming at you. This is across the board. Yeah. Um, so I encourage you to look at that because that is another piece to this. So there's no surgery involved in these procedures. But it's still licensing of other things so that we, it, we are not just looking at just this one topic. This is across the board multiple things we are looking at. Um, so it's not a single out. So 2066, I encourage you to look at that. Um, I've read it, thanks. Okay. Um, and so is there any questions, concerns, thoughts? I have thoughts as well. So. Okay. Oh. Okay, um, I, I'm very concerned about health and safety of all patients. Um, again, we are addressing this in other facilities as well. Uh, health health, like um, Representative Brink said, we're addressing this in 2066, uh, licensure of ambulatory surgery procedures. I, I realize that this is a procedure, maybe not a surgery even, uh, however, um, there are severe complications that can happen afterwards. I, I think that if if we don't address the health, the safety of the facility, that we're actually hurting women. Um, this bill does not address legal abortion. There's there's it, there's nothing that takes the right or the legality away from abortion. It's to promote health care, and I will I would say women's health care because they're the only ones who are being treated in this clinic. Um, and again, we're applying these standards across the board, not just in abortion clinics. Sure, I have lots of questions. Um, first of all, I don't think I've seen any statistics on um, some any problems that we have. I know we're addressing 2066 because of a specific issue um, with a family um, that lost an, uh, a 12-year-old. Um, so that's very sad. I'm, and you showed me some statistics in the ambulatory um, surgical Places. I haven't seen any statistics from um, our providers of abortion care, so I would like to see those again. So I always like to know what the problem is we're trying to solve. I have a list here um, of all of the regulations that Planned Parenthood um, follows, and they're pretty, there's probably no more heavily regulated healthcare industry than Planned Parenthood because. Um, every year we come together <laughs> with a different way to regulate um, abortion care and that has been going on now for many, many years, so it's very heavily regulated. Um, I did sit on the subcommittee for 2066, so I'm pretty familiar with it and I just had a meeting with um, some of the interested parties yesterday um, and they would say that we need to redefine that, that we are not covering all those areas. Um, some of the areas I'm afraid we're not covering would be colonoscopies and we're not covering oral surgery, and they say we're still not covering plastic surgery in those. So we need to, if we're really talking about making sure we um, cover everything, let's talk about covering everything. Um, always wondering, what, also, we had an amendment in House File 2066 which took the licensure renewal fee from $500 down to $50. And so is there a reason that we have $2,000 in this, in this bill? Um, so I believe had to do it, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that it had to do, there wasn't, did you say that there's no, you know, federal other dollars just all have to come from state, correct? Right. So it would cost more than, there. Well, it would cost the state more, yes. Yeah, it would cost the state more to cover that cost, I believe, is what the reason. Will it not cost the state more to do the ambulatory surgical centers? That would be partially federally funded. 
So because of CMS. Are federal requirements. Because of CMS. Yes, CMS requires us to be there so anyway. If I look at um, the information from Planned Parenthood, they also um, comply with strict CMS standards governing Medicare and Medicaid regulations, um, and the Americans with Disability Act, Environmental Protection Act. Um, so lots and lots of standards that they are already under federal law um, complying with. So I think we need to look at that all coming together to make sure that we're not being redundant. That um, you know, two thousand dollars is pretty expensive when we went from five hundred. Um, to make sure that hospitals, you know, are 50 and ambulatory surgical centers are 50. I mean, making this 2,000 seems a little ridiculous, especially since it does look like they are under federal um, regulations also. Um, again, this is probably the most heavily regulated industry that we have, and um, it's also one of the most safe uh, medical procedures that we have. 99% um, um, of one procedure I read recently is successful um, and safe, 99% of the time. And um, heavily regulated, so adding this burden on to me is a, we want to close the clinics. And I get that. I know there's a group here that wants to close the clinics. I know that. Um, this is bill number four in we want to close the clinics um, this year on this side. And I understand, but I won't be supporting the bill today. Thank you. Um, again, I guess, like I said, this isn't the only surgical center type situation that we've looked at um, this year. Uh, I think it's important, you know, I, I'm willing I'm to look at the key situation and make sure, but I, I do think it's important that we kind of keep those across the board, and so I'd like to see it move forward. Um, all right. Thank you all. Thank you.